our, our guest is Neil Blumenthal. He's the co-founder and co-CEO of Warby Parker. Warby Parker, four co-founders, two co-CEOs. We know that co-CEOs don't always have a great track record. Uh, how does it work at Warby Parker? So for example, when I got a temp page email at two in the morning, um, <laughs> that was a bunch of ideas about the area of the business that I was responsible for, my reaction was like, man, you know, does, does he not trust me? Um, and it's uh, often human nature um, to go negative and get very defensive. Um, and that actually led to one of our core values as a company, which is to presume positive intent. Your original business plan did not include physical stores at all. Describe for us the aha moment when you realized that you can't move forward without opening physical stores. For us, it was this realization, um, A, that people want to interact with our product in person, which we sort of knew, which is why we had the Home Try-On program, mm -hmm. um, but two, that we can build awesome relationships with our customers the more vulnerable we are, the more that we let them in. Um, and uh, that's been one of our philosophies is let's build relationships between our brand and our customers in the same way that human beings build relationships with other human beings, and that's through vulnerability. Now you've got these subscription models. What do you think the next business model will be for e-commerce? People used to buy Tide because they thought that it washed their clothes better. Now you go um, and you buy laundry detergent, you know that every single brand out there is going to wash your clothes just as good. Um, but what are some other attributes that you're going to purchase that on? Yes, it might be price, but they're all compar uh, comparably priced. Um, it might be um, impact on the environment, uh, impact on your health. Uh, the design of the packaging and the design of the logo, how that brand treats its employees, mm -hmm. um, all these uh, other attributes. Um, and that's something that uh, we also feel like we excel at and are able to do better than uh, all of our competitors. What do you guys do to sort of prevent yourself from becoming just another corporation and also maintain the, um, that, that appeal of working for a startup? So it's not just that we have to be comfortable with change, but we have to welcome and, and embrace it. And part of that change is becoming a, a, a bigger company and a different company. Um, one of the things that I was always so afraid of was, what if we have multiple locations? Um, how are we going to maintain our culture? Um, and I got some good advice. I was like, hey, Neil, like, you know, subcultures are going to emerge, and that's okay. We want to hire people that believe in Warby Parker's mission. Uh, the CFO of Airbnb uh, was speaking, and he actually put it uh, quite well. He said, hire missionaries, not mercenaries. Um, I want to ask you, get your thoughts on the startup scene, um, New York versus Silicon Valley. Uh, I mean, uh, I think the stereotypes is that you go to the Valley, um, and there's only one conversation you could have, and that is about tech. Um, you're here in New York, um, and uh, you can have conversation about tech, you can have about culture, about art, um, about fashion, and all these other things that I think make our lives richer, mm -hmm. um, and also I think can lead to more innovation and, and creativity.